So I wanted to show you real quick how you can create a widget to track billable hours across your team. Um, in the blog I just wrote, keep in mind that tracking billable hours or just work hours rather is a lagging indicator. It's in the past, you can't do anything about it. Usually better to, to focus on leading indicators, but this is still valuable data. So what we're gonna do on a fresh dashboard, I just labeled it service manager, is um, we're gonna go start off with the ticket entity, not the ticket entity, the work entries entity. Now note, you have these two, and you're gonna come across these a lot when you build reports. These are the pre and post approve items. Um, you can grab data from there, but work entries, fortunately, is available to us here in the widget. It's the easiest to work with because we don't have to worry about the improve and post process. So we're gonna choose that, and that is basically the data from our timesheet. Next, we're just gonna label it work, um, work time by resource. Now, it's important that we choose the correct graph. Some graphs are a bad bet here. Um, a funnel is a filter type graph, and so typically you have a lot of data up here and a little bit of data down there. For example, this may be um, a good way to look at uh, your automation over time to see uh, where you're cutting down tickets. Uh, what we're gonna do is look at whether we wanna use a pie or some type of bar graph. A pie chart is good visually. However, if you have a lot of technical resources, a pie chart's not gonna work well because you start to have like a really uh, difficult time in looking at all the different um, resources or texts that you have in it. So since um, you can have an arbitrarily large number of texts, you may have five or 500, it's better to do um, a board graph. And so what we're gonna do next is look at what we wanna report on. Obviously our count of work entries um, is going to give us the number. The problem with this is if I do a four hour and a two hour, that's six hours of work, but two time entries, that's not gonna be correct. So we're just gonna do work hours. Notice it automatically does sum, or we can do an average. We want the sum here. And by the way, average is gonna be really good if, for example, you're comparing people within the same tier on a certain class of tickets. Sum is just if you wanna see how much work output you get from a team as a whole. So the next thing is we wanna make sure we group the data. I'm gonna show you a problem real quick and then we're gonna solve it. So we're gonna group it by the resource and then we wanna do the time range. Do not compare things um, one time period versus the other unless you're comparing two same size time periods. So if you were gonna compare last week, you'd wanna compare all of this week. So if you want a point in time report that's like right now, then you don't wanna do previous week, previous month. You wanna do seven days back. Um, because otherwise you're comparing two completely different sets of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to real quick go do a work date and we're going to do a range, dynamic range rather. And then we're going to just say today minus one week to now. And we're going to do this. I have a little bit of sample data and this is not very useful to us other than knowing, hey, look, this is how the total amount of work. If we really want to granular, what we could do here is get a little bit more fine-tuned here. And then also we could group by, notice you can, you can do it by the day, the day to month. But what's nice here is it lets you group and, and, and uh, break up this chart by certain days. You could see that your resources tend to do more work on Wednesdays versus Thursdays, for example. That's how you would break that out. We're gonna leave it here though, just so you can see, this is how you can see the difference between these two resources. In the past week, and I'll tell you, it's actually really nice when you do here, when you do your names so that it's clear right off the bat. So work time by resource by week. Now we can compare these resources. And if I had sample data for 20 texts, we'd have 20 texts here. And this should be providing exactly what you're looking for. I hope you found this helpful.